In this video, I really go deep with my thoughts on social media for real estate agents, okay? This was a, a session that I did where, I mean, I really just let it all out when it comes to just content creation and how agents should be utilizing social media. And this could go for any businesses, honestly. So I want you to really take this in and really absorb. There's a lot of nuggets in here that could really help you in terms of social media and content creation and so on and so forth. You know, when to post, what to post, how to be creative, how to make yourself stand out in this crazy world of content creation and social media. So I hope you enjoy this. Leave me a comment, smash the like button, hit subscribe and all that good stuff. And here we go. But there's some fundamental principles that exist no matter what the market is. And then work hard to get in front of them and get their attention and make a connection with them. So today we're gonna to talk a lot about the right people and who you should be talking to who are likely to do business with you right now. How many actual Legion activities are there available to us? This job is predicated on you talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. So you've got to have something on the back end to make sure that they never forget who you are. Now these are real people. Now you can run call to action ads. There used to be an extra step where you make a lookalike audience to that audience, segregate it to your area, maybe go in a different direction with your um, strategies on social media, but it's a journey. There's a lot of steps. Most people on social media are telling you what to do, but they're not telling you how to do it. Welcome everybody for Rick and Chris. Woo! Thank you. This is gonna be awesome. The next two hours, there's two sessions. The next two hours with Ricky Carruth are gonna be amazing. We're gonna start talking about social media and prospecting. And then in the next session, we're gonna do live prospecting with Ricky Carruth making phone calls and you'll be able to watch that. So uh, my name is Curtis Finn. <laughs> so my name is Curtis Finn. I'm the president of Red X. We've been working with Ricky for, gosh, many, many, many years. Yeah, six, seven years. And, and we believe in what Ricky's doing. He went into the market with an idea to educate for free. And, um, and, and we really believe in that, in, in educating and helping and giving to get, like many of you do in your businesses, the more value you bring to your market, the more deals um, and transactions happen because of what you're doing. So we really love Ricky. If you know Ricky, just give him a round of applause for being here. It's a weird market right now in many markets. Am I right? And we go to conferences like this, and we're, we're down in the expo, and people are coming to our booth, and we've got people coming and going, I'm still getting 50 offers on every listing. Is anybody in that market right now? What about, yeah, what about, what about anybody in a market where they're like, this is the first time in 20 years I went without a paycheck for three months? Is anybody in that market? Because those exist. Nobody wants to raise their hand. <laughs> I see people going like this because <laughs> that's a reflection of the market sometimes. And, and so it's this weird market going on throughout the country, but there's some fundamental principles that exist no matter what the market is. Do you know what I'm saying? There's fundamental principles in business, and it's very simple. It's spend, the amount, spend your time and energy and effort and money on the people who are likely to do business with you, and then work hard to get in front of them and get their attention and make a connection with them. And the more connections and conversations you have with the people who are likely to do business with you, then the more business we do. And that's gonna be the same in any market, in any business throughout the entire country. So today we're gonna to talk a lot about the right people and who you should be talking to who are likely to do business with you right now and how to get their attention and how to get connections with them. But, I mean, it's a small room, so it's hard to do this whole reveal of Ricky Carruth because he's already back here <laughs> shouting over my shoulder. But you know who he is, but I want a big positivity, loud welcome for Ricky Carruth. <laughs> Hi. Oh, how you guys doing? This is going to be fun. So we're going to dive into uh, social media, everything these guys are doing to try to help you guys enhance social media, create better content, get in front of the clients that you actually want to do business with. If you 
been following me for a while, who are you? How many people have not been following me or is not following me? Where have you guys been? <laughs> it's real easy. Just tap, just type in Ricky on Instagram and I'm the very first one. So yeah, we're going to dive into that. The second hour, I'm going to make live calls. I'm going to get a for sale by owner on the phone. I'm going to get a for rent by owner on the phone. I'm going to get a uh, a random property owner, which is called geo leads, which I, call, I refer to as circle prospecting. And I hope to get, not hope, I, I'm gonna get all three of those prospects, one of each type on the phone to show you guys how easy this really is. Um, and so if you've been following me for a while, which most of you have, you, you know that when it comes to lead gen, there are so many different ways to lead gen. If you ever sat down and, and try to make a list, has anyone ever tried to make a list of every type of lead gen? Okay, you should, right? And you should get together with, with a, a bunch of agents and get together and try to make that list, right? How many actual lead gen activities are there available to us? And what happens is, and I've done this several times, we come up with about 20 or so, and then from there, it just becomes different variations of the 20, right? Just kind of a little different twist on one of the 20. It's really only about 20, 25 different lead gen activities, avenues. Um, and what I've realized, you know, through my career and to the point that I actually created a massive business was that no matter what lead gen activity that I choose, it all comes back to the same activity, the same point of the funnel, which is what? conversations regardless where you get your leads from you have to talk to them I was talking to a team leader out here he said what do you think about uh, ISA's calling right not my team members but the ISA so I was like what the team what's the team members doing oh they're lazy what it what if they don't want to make calls get a job get out of real estate this job is predicated on you talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate if you don't want to do that, if you're trying to figure out a way not to do that, then you're trying to figure out a way not to close deals. So I think about all the different lead gen activities coming back to the same action, talking to people, and I think, <laughs> I'll just go talk to people. I don't have to do all this stuff, right? So, so what we're talking about in the first hour takes us to another level where I've been so big on geo leads being able to pick the exact property owner I want to do business with and getting their information, their cell phone or their email for a penny and just talking to them, right? Using the properties as an excuse to get to know them to see what I can do to help them short and long term. I'm looking for life long relationships with the most property owners in my market. That's how I won. And that's how everybody, anybody here is going to win. That's how you're going to win. How you get there may be different than the way I got there. I don't know, but that's the objective is that the most property owners know who you are and, and they see you frequently. You're able to stay in front of them and they never lose that great first impression, warm and fuzzy feeling that they got when they met you for the first time or did a deal with you and how well you took care of them or talked to them. You never want them to forget that. So you've got to have something on the back end to make sure that they never forget who you are. And when you've got those things running on all cylinders, now it's just a matter of scaling. How can we get to 5,000 owners in our market, 10,000 owners, 20,000 owners that know who we are and that we're here to help and they never forget who we are. If we can crack that code, then we've really got something. So with, with geo leads and targeting the exact property owner I'm going to do business with, if that in my mind is the holy grail hack of real estate, because now I don't have to make YouTube videos. I don't have to run ads. I don't have to pay Zillow. I don't have to do direct mail because all that comes right back to the same thing, just talking to that person. I got their information, I could just talk to them. Now I've hacked the entire system. Now let's take it a step further. What if I had all that data and then for I could run a $5 a day ad, a $2 a day ad, a $8 a day ad, and target those exact people. Okay, so l let me break down really quickly, I'll hand it back to Curtis, just to set the, the foundation here of this. To run a great Facebook ad, okay, to, to have a successful campaign, it's, 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 a, it's a couple of layer process, okay? 
the reason why a, a lot of you did Facebook ads and, and you, you, you were unsuccessful, it didn't work, it failed, and you're like, this sucks because the leads are horrible or whatever. The reason being is because you ran call to action ads day one to the entire general public, which is who? People that live in their mom's basements. You know, 19 year olds that, that hate on people online and uh, people that are just messing with you, right? But the, pro but the true process is to run a non call to action ad, a non call to action ad with content. Then you create an audience after that ad is ran for a while of people who actually engaged with the content. Now these are real people. Now you can run call to action ads. There used to be an extra step where you make a lookalike audience to that audience, segregate it to your area, and then run more ads, and then call to action after you segregate that audience. But Facebook took the lookalike audiences out of the picture for us agents. The normal process is non call to action ads filter it down to the real people that may want to do business with you, then run call to action ads. Now we're getting real, really good leads. But what we've done is we said, you can run call to actions day one, why? Because we're not running ads to people that live in their mom's basements. We have the data of the exact property owners you want to do business with and every cent that you spend on ads are only being seen by the property owners that you want to do business with. Now you can run call to action ads day one and you can actually create the ad right on the platform. So that's what we're talking about in the first hour, is how we can help you hack the system of actually building a brand very efficiently, instead of <laughs> wasting a lot of money to try to figure out who your audience is, we already have your audience. Now you can just spend a couple dollars a day to stay in front of the audience, does that make sense? So that's what we're talking about, hour one. Um, I'll hand it back to Curtis, and then hour two, I'm gonna call them. Now, let's make some noise and see how loud we can really get. The, the problem with letting Rick go for that long, he, he tried to address most of the questions we surveyed people that we were going to go over today. Right there. So. But it may, but <laughs> let's get into the, let's, let's get deeper in some of these things because um, let's, let's start first with the, the targeting. We're, we're going to get into how to do that. Uh, very specifically because both Ricky and I have talked many times that we don't want the, half the stuff that you go to at these conferences is all conceptual and like, oh, that'd be fun. And then you still walk away going, what, what, what the heck am I even they're telling to you, do? They're telling you what to and, do, and, but they don't tell you how to do it. So, so we will get into that. I just want to, I just want to talk about a few things that Ricky's bringing up and, and it's part of that targeted audience. You know, only 4% of the country is going to turn over every year four to five percent and and so if you if you're getting on social media and you're just trying to build a brand that's really important long term it, it always for any business that that you want exposure you it's it's like putting a billboard up in your town you it, it, that might be good because everybody's seeing it but 60 well 35 percent of the people don't even own their home they're renting and these are national numbers so depending on your market that could be a lot more but 35% of the people you're paying to be in front of um, are renters, which could be your strategy, but usually it's, you know, not a that's, good strategy. That's a buyer strategy. Not a good strategy. So then, so you're already paying 35% more money than you should on most advertising. But then you go down and you go, well, of those 65%, you have like 8% of those that are actually going to do something in real estate this year. So now you're overpaying, you know, 92% of your money is going to people who aren't going to do anything. That's a long-term strategy if you just want to build a brand. If, if, if you want everybody to know Curtis real estate team, you know, and, and they're going to see that forever, that's a great strategy. But in this market, that's not a great strategy. We, we need, 2023 is weird and we need listings right now if we want to make money right now. And if we want to increase our personal production, that means when you say, when, when Ricky's talking about, you could take a very targeted list of people and do social media ads to them, then we want to take the people who are going to transact in the next 90 days and put those, and we want to put our stuff in front of them, not everybody, because we want to put targeted dollars to a targeted audience. And Facebook doesn't allow you to do that anymore. They, Facebook, 
wants to wash its hand clean, right? They're still dealing with Cambridge Analytica and all that stuff, right? With their class action lawsuits. So they, they want to say, well, you bring the data and then we'll target. So if you bring the data and give it to us, we'll go match that to Facebook meta users and then we can target ads to them. But you have to start with the data. But once you have that, right? And, and of course, we, we provide that if you know anything about Red X. But even if you go to your title company and say, give me a very targeted list of people and you can upload that, you're already starting with a targeted list of people that now, now the game is to get their attention and get in front of them. And so, Ricky, how, how, how would you relate what you do on social media, which is where most people have found you, um, social media being YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all these other platforms. That's how they found, how, how would you relate that then to the agents of how can I put my stuff or start creating my stuff and putting it in front of the right audience? Mm. Also, is it like one degree in here? Mm. Mm. So can, can we, it's the whole hotel? The so speakers not, sounded nervous at the general session, but they weren't nervous, they were just cold. Yeah. <laughs> so can, can you call the guy and let's, let's, let's hope uh, okay. swing uh, the pendulum to hot. Social media uh, for you guys. Um, Social media is a journey. There's nothing you're gonna learn this one day here, the conference over here. You may get a nugget that changes what you're doing a little bit. <clears throat> you may go in a different direction with your um, strategies on social media, but it's a journey. There's a lot of steps and there's a lot of, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of learning steps that you, you learn stuff and you start molding your, your social, um, you're always reinventing yourself, right? So let's just say, um, back in September of last year, I quit posting on Instagram for about two to three weeks. I had calls with Meta. Um, I did a lot of market research and I came back and I said, I'm going to post four to six times a day, right? A lot of you guys saw that. And so I was posting four to six times a day. Why did I do that, right? My, I, my Instagram blew up to 200,000 and then for about a year it was just flat. I would lose about as many followers as I was gaining. And after about a year, I didn't really care for a while, but after about a year of that, I was like, this is not right. Something, I'm not doing something right. Let me focus on this. And until I treated social media like a real job, like let me really spend time here to grow, I didn't really grow. Until I realized, let me post four to six times a day when I started doing that, I started getting 100 followers a day net and just growing. And I did that from September till about two months ago. And then I said, okay, now I'm plateaued out at 100 followers a day. And now let me reinvent myself again. And you know what I realized? Let me spend what I was spending on six videos on one amazing video a day. And you guys have probably seen that over the past two weeks. I'm posting once a day now and it's way higher quality and it's getting way more engagement and I'm getting more followers than I was during the last phase. So you see, even where I am six years into the social media content creation game, I'm still reinventing myself and trying to figure out what's working better and what's, what's not working, what used to work that doesn't work anymore. And I'll tell you what is really working the best right this second is what I just screamed out when he was talking about all the fluff happening at these kind of conferences is that most people on social media are telling you what to do, but they're not telling you how to do it. And if you look at my content over the last two weeks, each of those videos is walking you through step by step how to do whatever it is I'm trying to tell you to do. I'm not just saying go get listings. I'm saying you should be getting listings. Here's how. I'm not saying um, go after absentee owners. I'm saying you should go after absentee owners. That's where um, right now there could be um, some some good opportunities to get listings because people feel like they're locked into the three-year rates um if they don't if they don't live in the house that they're trying to thinking about selling um bless you then they're probably they could be thinking about selling it with where prices are right it's a better opportunity than calling primary homeowners so i didn't just say you should call them i said you should call them and here's how step by step click click clear click there go to this website um so think about that when you guys are creating uh, content. 
is tell people how to do stuff, not just what they should be doing. Like you should buy a house, the market's, you know, this and that. Now, okay, cool. That's a great, that's a great first part of that video. Now let's follow up with how they go buy the house, right? And a lot of people assume that people know more than they do. I was talking to an 18 year old. This is one thing that changed my entire life. I was talking to an 18 year old that's just a social media genius. He's just crushing it. And I said, let's have breakfast, man. And uh, he'd already seen me and he pulled up a couple of my videos and he kind of watched them. He's like, bro, I do not know what the hell you just said. And I was like, boom, like I'm talking over everyone's head because I think I, it, this is what I live. So to me, it's like real estate 101, the ABC's elementary stuff. But to the regular person out there, they don't know what I'm talking about. Can I jump in with an example of this? We, we have a new tool that's spam remediation, where if your phone number shows up as spam on someone's phone, then we get that spam tag. But we call it spam remediation. And I'm, I've been in real estate. Has anybody heard the word remediate before? Because we're in real estate, right? And mold remediation or lead paint remediation. Outside of real estate, do you know how many people have heard the word or used the word remediate? Nobody. And, and, and we sit there and we go, no. Of course they've heard that word. But, but we, when you know something and you're in it every day and you're speaking at a 10 and you try to, you try to simplify it down to a six, People need a one or a two. They don't need you to try to simplify the, the words. And one more thing on this is, is um, maybe this will be controversial, but <laughs> if, you, if you listen to Donald Trump speak, he speaks and tweets at a, a kindergarten reading level. And, and, and people think that he's, he does that because he's dumb, and I go, well, he's a marketing genius. And so um, if, if you want to go test your ads, don't, don't do what Donald Trump does on tweet, Twitter, but at least take whatever you're doing on social media or even posting and, and dumb it down to a kindergarten reading level and see how much more engagement you have. And part of that is because people are scrolling so fast that their brain needs to understand it quick enough that they'll engage. And if their brain has to kick it to a part of the brain where they have to process the vocabulary or the concepts, they, they, they will scroll right past your stuff and never engage. So I started making content from that point of view that the, that, the, that the viewer may be too young to understand or isn't even in real estate. And so it's given me a, an entirely different perspective on the kind of content I should maybe be creating to reach more people. My current audience knows what I'm talking about. You guys are professional real estate agents, but what about people that are just getting into real estate or even consumers? Um, so it changed my, my perspective there. So I thought that was something to share with you guys. If you, if two things take away there, um, don't tell them just what to do, but tell them how to do it. Okay. And the second thing is don't assume that they know these words that you, you use every day. They don't, um, break it down. Just dumb it down just a little bit from where, what you would. Another thing that I did, I've never done before ever is script out my entire videos. Um, before two weeks ago, everything was, here's the hook, and then I'll just flow from there, whatever comes to my mind. Okay, here's a, here's a great idea, here's a hook, here's kind of what I'm gonna do. Now, let me just get in the front front of the uh, camera and then just scream what I, how I feel about that subject. That worked in 2019 really well. I think now it needs to be more thought out. And so the last couple of weeks were my first batches of videos where they were fully scripted. And you can probably tell I don't, I don't I'm kind of like this last batch that isn't, isn't posted yet. I actually started on feeling like myself again when I'm filming, right? And so I think it's, there, there you go, it's a process. And it's, it was almost like I started over and I probably almost even look like a new social media person when I did the first few videos that I scripted out the whole thing. You always have to be reinventing yourself. The internet, right? The long tail of the internet. This is why I think we have to tell people how to do stuff. Because in 2019, they didn't know what to do. 2020, 18, they didn't know what to do. So all the content telling them what to do worked well. But now everybody's heard what to do. So this is part of the internet maturing, right? And, and us as a, as a, as a generation, you know, consuming the content to the point where 
you know, I would say we're, we're all extremely smart when it comes comparing us to past generations that didn't have all this information at our fingertips. Um, we know what to do, right? I think the next phase is how to do it. And um, you need to think about that in terms of your buyers and sellers, right? This is what you should do, okay? And then tell them how to do it. Um, now, what, what's the phase after that going to be? Who knows? But I think that's where we are right now. And, and, and just to piggyback on that just for a second, creating content for buyers and sellers, awesome. Please sprinkle in some content for other agents as well. Why? A couple reasons. One, um, you're going to referrals. If people know you and they're like, oh, he's giving great tips and he's in Austin and I'm in, you know, Atlanta, that's going to be my guy if I send referrals. The guy that's crushing it on social, giving us some advice and stuff and he's selling stuff. Your buyers and sellers will look at you like you're an authority figure, right? And then you start attracting agents, right? Now you're starting to branch out your social into a national uh, opportunity, global opportunity versus just a local opportunity, right? Social is a global opportunity. And so that's why I never use social for my local real estate business, right? I built it with phone calls and emails and direct mail and stuff. And then when I started using social, I was only focused on global brand. Because why am I going to spend my precious social media time on local when this is a global opportunity? So make your content for buyers or sellers. Build your local business. Be the mayor of your town. But sprinkle in some, some content for other agents too. Stuff that you're learning. Stuff that you're documenting about your business. Things that you learn. Hacks that you figure out. And that's going to help you with attraction. That's going to help you with referrals. And, and it's going to put you hopefully in a position, the same position I'm in, where I could step out of sales at some point. That's the power social media has. If you do it right, it could put you in a position where five, ten years down the road, that could be your retirement. Whatever businesses you can build on those platforms. I, I don't know. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> I just let, let me distill that in. And then I want to spend 10 minutes talking about the, the nitty gritty of how they can get started. Um, is is. The, everybody in here wants to recruit. Um, I hope there, there's a pretty massive opportunity uh, in EXP for recruiting. And so that, that's what Ricky's talking about is a global presence. You can start, you, you can do both. That's, that's what boosting is for. And, and a, lot of, a lot of these social media gurus that you follow start, start clowning on organic social media and it's pay to play. And there's a lot of companies in real estate that love to take your $1,000, $1,500 a month to do Facebook ad, which is all lead generation. But we're shifting in, in the world from a sales economy to a marketing economy. It used to, has anybody heard that it takes seven to 12 touches to make an impression? Do you know what current experts are saying? 30 to 50. Because there's so much noise going on right now that our brains are being programmed to ignore what everybody's doing. So, so you have to have this content and that's what boosting you're, you're making all these videos and you're making impression, you're teaching people valuable information, um, to, and then, and then you're boosting for very little money. I mean, you can, for $3, two to $3 a day, you can put your content in front of 3000 additional people. And, and it's not about getting them to click and generate a lead. It's about, it's about them seeing your face over and over and over and over again. And you do that on a global scale, like Ricky's saying, you can also do that on, on your market scale because you can take expired listings or FISBOs or geo leads, right? The, the neighborhoods or pre foreclosures, absentee owners, people who are likely to transact right now and you can put your stuff in front of them, right? And how much valuable, is, is a, let me tell you why your home, the three reasons why your home didn't sell to an expired listing, their, their brain's gonna pay attention to that Be, because their brain is programmed to filter out crap. But if they're already thinking, I'm really pissed off that my home didn't sell. And then there's a video that says, let me tell you three, th three reasons why your home didn't sell. They're gonna watch that video. And then they're gonna share that video. And then other agents, are going to steal that video and follow you. But as they follow you, then their network gets exposed to your videos also. And it's a way to hack that algorithm to grow your presence globally by starting with a specific audience in your market as it goes, as it goes wide. So 
Um, let's talk about making video. Not everybody in here wants to become a, a digital marketer. And I think you said something that I don't want people to misunderstand because you said I started treating it like a job. And for most agents, they go, well, my job is to sell real estate. How do, how do you reconcile that? How do, you, how do you put the right amount of focus on it while maintaining what is important for me and my business? I think uh, having great systems in place, okay? Um, that's one thing. I think also understanding where the priorities in your business need to be, okay? So if you follow, you know what I'm gonna say as far as what your day needs to look like, right? Your day needs to look real simple. And a lot of you are over, how many of you feel like you're overcomplicating your entire business, right? Just too many things happening. Like I built my entire business on just calling property owners, creating relationships and doing a weekly email. That's it. I don't remember what, what people's dog's birthdays are. I, I'm not sending them how to cook shrimp tatouffee. Like I can Google recipes and like, if somebody sends me something that says, happy birthday, Rufus, my dog, I'm gonna just completely block them right then because that's creepy. <laughs> but in today's world, if I were a new agent right this second, um, the most, if you understand old school real estate, it's phone calls. And if you understand even in today's world, conversation is the key to all closings. And then if you understand, okay, but in the new world is digital. And this is a place where we can create these conversations. But then when are we going to have the conversations, right? There still has to be a time and place to have the conversations. So I feel like the most dangerous agents right now are the ones that are, are using old school and new. They're, they're not scared of old school and they're not scared of new school. They're combining the two. Right. And so for me, it's like every day is organize my day, study the MLS hot sheet, figure out who I'm going to call at 830, 9 o'clock. I'm on the phone from 9 to 12. After lunch, I'm making videos all day. I'm doing all my marketing, my weekly email, my handwritten letters, all that stuff. And so if I can if I can organize my day like this now, if I have an appointment, then that trumps everything. It's OK to miss a call session or uh, making a video like you, but you've got to get your systems down okay so let's so let's look at systems since we're talking about videos with videos what do we need to do we need to make one incredible video a day okay 60 seconds how do we put a system in place to create one amazing video per day well if you make your calls all morning and you're leaving the rest of the day for marketing you got two and a half days there every week, basically, half, five half days to focus on marketing. Let's say two of those get erased by appointments, you got three solid half days, a day and a half to write amazing scripts and to film seven amazing videos all at once. It takes me days to come up with the right scripts I feel good about, but when I, when I film, it's over in about 30 minutes. I filmed all seven videos, I'm done. So batch filming for the week, and I think maybe even trying to bump down to like eight or nine. If you do eight or nine a week, that way you've got two in case two end up being a little kind of like a dud or, or if not, then you've got an extra one for the following week to kind of make sure you've got one a day. But when your clients start, it's just like the weekly email. When they see you doing something so consistent, they start to affiliate you with consistency and dependability and hard work and honesty and professionalism and integrity they start to think, wow, this person is everything I want in a real estate agent. They're going to, I see incredible content every day by them. I see weekly email every Wednesday. This is, this is the highest form of consistency. That's what they want. Confidence and consistency and dependability, somebody they can trust. How are they going to trust you if you're posting twice a week and it's random? You're not doing weekly emails. You're doing a couple emails here and there, random. Then they're gonna look at you like your business is random and that you're not consistent and they don't trust you. They're gonna go use an agent who is very systematic on how they're marketing. So, so think about scripting out seven to nine videos a week. Spend some time there. Like they have systems to help you script. He can, he'll go through that in a second. 
um, but then batch your filming. Knock it all out, you know, in like an hour. Knock out your seven videos and boom, you're good for the week. You got the ones from last week that you're posting this week. You just filmed the ones for next week that are gonna start getting edited and next week you'll do it again. And so you start to build these systems where you can actually put out the amount of consistency that you need to put out. Make sense? Let, let me jump in on scripting really quick because if we're starting with the target audience, um, I, this, is, is, this is what I, to boil it down into something you could take away and go do right now. Pick an audience, someone that you have access to. I'm gonna show you what we do in, in like three minutes, right? Um, everything that we do. Uh, and then just encourage you to come talk to uh, our team at the booth if you're interested in some of these tools. But you could do it all on your own. And let me tell you how to do that. Pick an audience, someone that you have access to. Uh, expired Fizbos, go to your title company and get a neighborhood. Uh, just pick a specific audience and Google how to create a target audience on Facebook. And they will walk you through that process. With the target audience, I want you to write down the five questions that they have because of what's going on in their life. If it's an expired listing, it's the same things that you ask when you call them. You're asking them, why do you think the home didn't sell? That's what they're at. That's what they're thinking. They have like, I didn't sell for these reasons. So, so you, you, you ask them questions. Think of the questions that they're thinking about because of what's going on in their life. A FISBO, I got to sell my home because right? And all of these other reasons that they might have in their head. And that's your theme for your, for your videos. Mm -hmm. Just think about those things and just answer those questions. And those are your videos that you can then just talk about in 60 seconds or less. And you can post those. And I would say consistency over intensity all day long. I love what, what you're saying about that. Um, that because the algorithms favor that also, it's not just people. The, the, the social media platform algorithms want consistency and they will, they will more often share your content in front of people if you're consistent in your posting. So just, if you can't do seven, just do one every other day, but just be consistent at it and put it in front of that target audience. And then the idea is do something else to get in front. You, you have to double up because of the amount of times it takes. So if you are gonna call someone Call them and you'll be surprised at like, oh yeah, I've seen your videos. You know, do a video around a whole neighborhood that where you're gonna have an open house and see how many people come and go, oh yeah, I've seen that. I, you don't know me, but I've seen your videos. Because, because you're paying $2 a day to put those videos in front of the right audience. How, how many, how, how much are you guys spending on Zillow? A lot. <laughs> Goose egg? Um, who's buying leads? How much are y'all spending? 5,000? You could spend 10% of that. And how many leads you get for 5,000? 17, okay? You could spend 10% of that. Get 7,500 property owners of your choice. 10 years worth of expired data. Multi-line dire to call them and ad builder to run ads for them for a 10th of what you're spending. And you get that every month, 75 more, 7,500 more, 7,500 more. You build a database of 100, 200,000 people in your, in your market, and you've got all their data, email, phone number. You can run ads to them. You can call them. They're the people you want to do business with for a tenth of what you're paying. 17 leads, 7,500 leads. Um, before he does this demo, I just let's take one question because we don't have a lot of time. Yeah, from Red X, yeah. Not uploading it. Red X does it for you. He's fixing to do the demo. You you create the ad right on the right on Red X's website. It's all right there. What's the content of your weekly newsletter? Go to startmyweeklyemail.com. One more. Is it for the what market? So we do work in Canada as well. So the same social media, yep. Social media can work, especially if you have other data that you can upload into our system, then we've simplified that process to create the target audience. Let me just show you real quick that the three, the three parts of the strategy is we have data, expireds, FISBOs, pre-foreclosures, full neighborhoods where you can filter that down, 
We have tons of filters. So if you, you, you could pull in your whole neighborhood and say, I only want to look at properties that have air conditioning. I mean, you could, you could get stuck in analyzing what it is, but we have a lot of data that you could start with to find your target audience. Um, you can take that target audience and right inside of here with no internet, I keep getting errors here. Um, but so if any of you have seen any of our videos on your social media platforms, that's because we loaded it up here. We loaded up your emails and then we did an ad right? right from our own platform. So if you see this video, then you'll know, oh, yeah, they, they, they had the attendee list and we loaded it up. And we said, hey, show our videos to all of these agents, right? Um, Brand Builder is where we start to help you do a whole lot of things. So you can put in any topics. It's AI driven. If you're having a hard time thinking of what scripts I want, you put in a topic that says, I, I want to do, I want to do videos for expired listings. Um, and they, they'll start, uh, they'll start creating outlines for scripts. And then once you have, once you have your script, you can just hit record. That's not going to work because the camera. Oh, what does work? So I have a teleprompter here. Um, if I want to see my face because I want to go, it's almost better that you don't see your face when you're recording, actually, because everybody gets caught up in the like, oh, my hair doesn't look perfect, or you know, what's whatever prevents you from doing the work. So, um, but you can record that right from here. There's a mobile app. Most people are going to do it right on their phone. And then you can submit that. And I'll show you some of the things we've done, right? If it takes you three takes, you upload that. We have a team that will then take that, do all the time stamping, the editing, the quality check, and you'll have a completed video. I mean, we use this for our own social media, so go follow us on Instagram. You can see a lot of these videos that we do um, right on social media. And then, of course, we have the full social media management platform where we'll manage five, five different platforms for you if you want to do that. So we do everything. You can do it on your own, I, you know, you, but you can also have an entire content team in your pocket and have us do it all for you. But again, I think the strategy really starts in today's market. If you want to turn social media into listings now, it starts with the, the target audience that you specialize in. If, if you specialize in VA loans, go find a list of, of you know, veterans that you can upload and put your videos in front of. That's what you want to do. That's how you're going to get more specific that will turn into deals faster than waiting for your brand to catch up with the transactions. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we have time for two more questions for Ricky and I. Mm -hmm. Yep. Does all the editing, creates one social, yep. puts the, the captions and emoji stamps and sound effects for background music. You choose your preference of style and everything. Yes, it's available in Canada. Yes, available in Canada. All right, so on your YouTube, you talk about talking to agents and talking to buyers and sellers. Do you have Google Tech No, same one. Yep. 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 The algorithm's going to show them what they like. If they're a consumer, they're, they're really, I mean, unless they go to your page and start scrolling through, but the algorithm is going to show them what, you know, if they're a consumer, if they're an agent looking for real estate coaching or something, they're going to show them your coaching videos. Cool, guys. Listen, Rick it, uh, well, yeah, I mean, th think, about, think about if you spent a fraction of the money you spent on, say, Zillow or something like that, and you're able to create a scenario where now your business, for the fraction of the money, you're, you're in front of the exact people you want to be in front of, not random, not random leads, right? And now you have the power to hit them with ads and you can spend a couple dollars a day because every dollar is getting in front of the exact targeted audience. And then you're calling them and they're like recognizing you from the ads and then you're emailing them and now you got the weekly email happening. Think about how massive your business will be. This is called efficiency and scalability and making your life 10 times easier. Now, who's gonna go out there and buy this product? <laughs> Put your hand in the middle and let's say, one, two, three, I am. One, two, three. All right, go do it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. 
In 15 minutes, we're gonna be live prospecting in this same room. If you wanna save your seat, again, we had like a thousand people register to see that. Otherwise, any questions you have about Red X, uh, we have a whole team down in the expo hall.